vital Christian issues examines the teachings, belief, principles, and the misconceptions of the Holy Bible. Controversial and stimulating, exploring real life issues with Keith Christian and Steve Wright. This is Vital Christian Issues. Welcome to Vital Christian Issues on Pillars. We are here this week. Uh, many of our community members have seen a building erected sometime here in the arts or of Port Harbor, eastward going to gutters and the left hand. And many of our community members are wondering what is happening over here. This week, Vital Christian Issues take a, a trip, a visit to this uh, mosque, as it is called. And we are here to talk with members from the Amadea Muslim Jamaat, which is a Jamaican uh, organization. We are here to find out more about the Islam, what they believe, and what they are doing here in our country and in Bhutava, so to speak. Jamaica is known as a Christian community, but we put up a defense immediately without taking the time to listen, to try to learn and understand. And that is one of the reasons why we are here with you this week. The Bible, the Christian Bible, do inform us that we must listen a matter before we answer it. And we are here to find out more about Islam and more about the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat Jamaica. With me on set this week, to my close left, we have Hamid, an outstanding member here, and to my far left, Kip Rahim, born in Ghana, Africa, and he's here with us this week to inform us and tell us more about the religion, Islam, Haram, Middle East, World News, attention on that part of the Middle East all the time, affiliated with uh, terrorism, war, bombing, and, and so forth. But this week, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to find out what is this religion all about. All right. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to come to your show. Uh, first of all, Islam means Islam is a, is a word, it's an Arabic word. And just as every word has its meaning, for anybody to understand what the religion of Islam stands for, it is important for one to understand what the word Islam means. Islam means peace. Peace between you and your, and your creator, and peace between you and your fellow human beings. It also means um, submission, total submission to the will of God so that anybody who uh, professes or anybody who claims that he belongs to that religion must be peaceful so it, it cannot be possible for anybody to say that he belongs to that peaceful religion and at the same time you know, show any sign of violence towards his own environment of course, the Prophet Muhammad, for whom so Islam, who peace, who introduced the religion, said, he said it three times, he said, he is not a true Muslim, or he is not a true believer. Anybody who is not able to spread peace around him, and where he stays, the people who stay around him, if they don't enjoy peace from him, that person's claim that he is a Muslim is false. So, unfortunately, like you mentioned, the Middle East, what is going on? Everything going on in the Middle East, Middle East at the moment, is political and it has nothing to do whatsoever with Islam. Of course, majority of the people over there are Muslims, yes, but then one must sit back to analyze the problems critically so that we're able to sift out and know that which one is religious and which one is political. So, to, all that we will say for now is that what is going on in the Middle East has nothing to do with Islam, Islam. as such. With the religion, it's the religion more Islam. political yes. power. Uh, okay, and um, Ibrahim, native of Ghana, um, tell me something though. In Ghana, is it Christian? Or do you, you learn about Christianity in, in, in? Yeah, yeah. 
and you you um, reject Christianity. Tell us the I think I have to also thank you for this opportunity. And, uh, you know, in Ghana, Ghana is a country of a diverse uh, religious setters. And uh, among the religions you can find in Ghana is Christianity, Muslims, even Hinduism and other things. But uh, it will interest you to know that uh, it has never, ever since I was born, I think it has never happened that uh, you find Christians, fighting Muslims or Muslim fighting Christians. In fact, we are at peace with each other. And the, the, the cordial relationship between Christians and Muslims have been one of the best uh, in, uh, in Ghana. No so, to cut it short, I would say Christians and Muslims in Ghana are brothers. And they see each other as worshiping the same and one true God. Only maybe through different, different means. So we are at peace. Okay. You, you recently uh come to Jamaica here and do you have the same feeling that Christians and Muslims live together peacefully? Um, I think uh, I have just spent almost three weeks and uh, you know for, for some of the, 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 the sayings across yeah, uh, it, it, it hasn't been maybe the best but because of how the Western portray Islam and the kind of news we get on the, uh, the, the media about Islam and terrorism. Uh, we are hoping that, even if it is not a bad, we are hoping that change will change. Okay. All right. Um, so, Hamid, what is the purpose for erecting this um, mosque here in, in our community? The purpose of the erection of this mosque, I would say, is the purpose for which humanity was created. Mankind was created for the purpose of the worship of one God. And so, uh, as believers in the, in the unity of, of God, we, it is our responsibility to spread the message of the oneness of God and oneness of humanity as such. The Islamic faith teaches us that humanity, no matter uh, which part of the, of, of the globe we belong to, we still remain one family. And the Holy Quran emphasizes that as far as the, the difference of languages and the color of skins goes, that is only to, to, to show the beauty of creation. But that is not to say that one uh, uh, color or one uh, tribe is uh, superior to other. So as long as the message is from one God and as long as humanity is seen as one family, it is our responsibility to go out there and then we spread this meaning. Of course, this organization is, is, is in more than 180 countries of the world. We are trying to, to, to explore all avenues and, and explain the message. Let us come together, let us come in a one another and worship one God and bury all differences. Because at the end of the day, what matters is that we shall go back to Him. So if it doesn't matter how we worship that one God with different methods, Yes, as far as the different methods is concerned, yes, the different methods may, may be there. But then, uh, Islam also says that uh, we should be, you know, um, share information with one another. Sometimes we invite people, they come here, we discuss issues, and sometimes they realize that maybe the way we go about things here, they appreciate, we also listen to them. For instance, when we read the Bible, we come across passages in the Bible where Jesus Christ, on whom the peace, when he was praying to God, he prostrated on his forehead. So Muslims do the same. So people also come here and say, Oh, what we are doing here is not that different from the way Jesus pray, you know, also pray to God. So those are minor, minor issues that should not bring any you know, differences. But the main important thing that we need to cling to is the fact that God is one and we all adhere to him. We all, we all worship one God and that humanity is one family. You know that, um Christianity, yes. men, large parts of Christendom, do not believe that Muslims and the Christians worship one God. They call on the name of Yahweh, Jehovah, Jesus, and, and you call on the name of um, Allah. Allah. Yes. And, and, and therefore they say, Allah, that's strange, that's new, that's a different God. How do you explain that when you're talking about our worship the same? The same time. Yes, when you, when you go to France, 
Maybe you may not hear the name God in your ears. You hear Dieu. But they are referring to the same being. You know? When you go to uh, 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 maybe Germany, there is also God. It's also the same thing. Instead of D, it sounds T. Then, in our language in Ghana, we say Onyame. Onyame is an attributive name, which means that he's the only being when you get him, you are satisfied. Apart from that, anything else cannot satisfy you. If it is money, once you get it, you want to get more. So that is an attributive name given to him. But we consider the name Allah as the, as the substantive name of God that you know, um, refers to the Supreme Being. Therefore, if anybody in Jamaica says that maybe he believes in Jah or he believes in God, we, we know that it's referring to the same, same being. So and it doesn't make a difference? It doesn't make a difference at all. But um, when Jesus and his disciples were on earth here back then, what language they spoke in and what was the name that they called God then? Um, maybe the only reference I'll give you to you, I'll give you for you to know how they were referring to God is that critical time when Jesus Christ was on the cross. So Jesus Christ, we know, uh, came from God. And we, uh, uh, people even refer to him as God, they refer to him as Son of God. So what name did he refer to? He said Eli or Eloi. So Elohim or Eloi, and uh, in Arabic is Allah, is the language that he used. That Allah, Allah, or Eli, 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 my God, my God. So the translation is my God, my God. But you see in Arabic or in Hebrew, when I say this, this uh, for example, this pen is for me, the name uh, uh, pen is Kala. So when I want to say it belongs to me, I say Kala me. The E means the possessive. So Jesus Christ, when you want to say, maybe you want to say Allah, but when you say, you want to say, my God, uh, Eli, meaning that my, my God. So you realize that the uh, Arabic and the uh, Hebrew, they are sister languages, they are of course Semitic language, very close. So the language that they were, he was using actually was either uh, 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 Hebrew or Aramaic, which is very close to Arabic. Okay. Um, you have mentioned the the Quran, and I gather that this is the the book of the laws, of the principle of the Most High, or of the Founder. Yes. Tell us um, some more about the Quran, the teachings from the Quran. There, there are some sections um, in the Quran that are questionable that have been there um, under the debate for, for many years throughout the world. But tell me the, 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 the basic um, teachings from the Quran. Okay. Uh, to start with, the whole Quran is a revealed word from God directly. And Muhammad, on whom be peace, is the one who received the message from God. He did not even add a single letter that comes from himself. So he was on the mountain in Arabia praying to God and then God revealed himself to him, I mean he's by sending an angel. So angel Gabriel, who is an arch Gabriel, uh, the archangel, appeared to him and he started this revelation. So when this revelation was received from the angel, he would come down and uh, uh, find people who knew how to read and write and he dictated to them because Muhammad himself never had any formal education. So he dictated to them and then they would write it down. So basically, the whole Quran is a revealed word from God and it has, it, um, it, it has made a lot of references to most of the prophets who came before him. You know, referring to them in the sense that he is drawing our attention that these prophets like Abraham, like Moses, like Noah, they never came to the world on their own. They were sent. And as such, some of them who did not pay heed to the word of God were punished. So, and those who also listened to God were, were blessed. So, the Holy Quran is telling us that if we also accept God through Muhammad, we are going to receive the same blessing. And if we refuse him, we are also going to maybe receive punishment like the people of Noah. So then, the whole Quran basically tells us that one, uh, God is one, humanity is, is, is also one family, 
And then the things that we no matter learn from the Bible about the Ten Commandments, about the respect of parents and the you know, all those things are still repeated. But then there are still more which are added. Because you might have also learned from the Bible that Jesus Christ of whom the peace said, I have many words to tell you. But if I mention them, you cannot bear them now. Yes. But when he the spirit of truth comes, he will tell you all that you are about to know. So basically most of the things that we find in the Quran could still be found in the Bible. But there are still others also which I know are additional you yes, know, instructions yes. which do not be found in the Bible. Right. We we're gonna take uh, our first break here, viewers. I'll be mean, back to talk some more about it after the break. Virtual Christian Issues Examines This is Virtual Christian Issues Welcome back viewers. Um, talk with members from the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, which is another acceptable name I should think, yes. We were talking before we took the break about the Holy Quran and the, the, the Prophet Muhammad who heard from God and put the, the words together. Well, he, he, he told uh, persons that could write and they put it in the Holy Book. And followers have been living by those words from the Prophet which he received from God. More about the Holy Quran and more about the Prophet Noah. Since he is the one that heard from God, and it's stated in your um, books that he mentioned to believe in all his prophets, the prophets of God. But, but why is Muhammad so different? Because we have Moses, we have um, the various prophets and throughout the, the centuries. And why is Muhammad so different? Um, he is basically we, we we see all prophets as same as equal, but the difference here refers uh, as you are referring to him is, is is only for the fact that he, as we believe, was given the last you know. For example, we have <laughs> we have the Old Testament yes. and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So we, we we believe that he was given the last testament. Okay, he was given the last testament, and after him. No prophet is going to bring any other law. So Jesus was before Muhammad. Yes, he was before him. And he says between him and Jesus is about six hundred years, six hundred seven hundred years apart. Okay. So and when he came, when Muhammad came, he said that he has come as a result of the prophecies of the uh, prophets who came earlier, and as such, his teachings you know, uh, encourage us to believe in all the prophets and any Muslim or anybody who claim that he's a Muslim, but does not believe in any of these earlier prophets like Abraham or Moses or Jesus, is not, not considered as a Muslim. According to the definition of Islam, Islam says that any Muslim, the religion is Islam and anybody who believes in it is a Muslim. Right? So anybody who calls himself a Muslim must be ready to believe in God, believe in all the prophets, believing in his, in, in his angels and must also believe that there is a day of resurrection or accountability after death. Basically that's how we believe. Okay. Um, so the so what are the differences though, between the Holy Quran and the Bible? Yeah, the, the, I think the differences as as we can we can see uh, the fact that the Bible has, uh, has one, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and if you also look at it, the Quran was revealed in Arabic, the Bible was revealed in, in both Hebrew and uh, Hebrew and uh, Greek. Yeah. And the Arabic uh, Quran was revealed in Arabic. The difference I can give now is the text. The Quran remains as of now, very intact in terms of the text. It was revealed in Arabic. Any Quran you see, you see the Arabic. Even if it is translated into a different language, you see the Arabic language aside and the English or the other language also aside. 
Meaning, if the one who was translating made a mistake in translating, the Arabic remains intact. And uh, for Muslims, no matter uh, which sex or which denomination a Muslim may belong to, whether he belongs to this one or the other, the same Quran without any version, no version, I uh, mean, no ordination, and nothing of that. And so, so that is one, I think, or, uh, one of the unique uh, qualities of the distance we uh, well, we see, in, terms of let, 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 in terms of the teachings, um, one thing which still remains unique, which I, I keep on saying, is that apart from the Holy Quran, there is no scripture that emphasizes and that enjoins its followers to accept all other prophets. Maybe if somebody is a Christian, the person's concern may be about Christ. And if somebody is a Jew, his concern is about Moses. Right? But if somebody is a follower of the Holy Quran, he is enjoying to accept all these prophets. Because that is the only way that mankind can enjoy peace. Because if I believe in your prophet and I respect him and I will not make any you know, bad or foul remarks about him, how do I fight you? For instance, if a Muslim gives birth to a child and he named the child Isa, Isa means Jesus. A Muslim gives birth to a child and he named the child Musa. Meaning uh, Moses. So, if you are you are a Jew and I uh, name my child after your prophet, I you know naturally you shall be free. I mean, you shall be the, the, the relationship with cordial, and I will not make any any, any bad remarks because my my whole book teaches me that I must respect your prophet because he came from God. You see? So, the Holy Quran actually, um, for instance, I will give you some few things to to elaborate. The, we were talking about difference. For instance, Mary, who is the mother of Jesus, the story is mentioned. The whole chapter in, in the Quran is known as Surah to Maryam. The chapter of Mary is in the Quran. It talks about Mary and the and the, 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 the parents. The fact that the parents had prayed to God that God should give them a male child who would be dedicated to the service of God. Now, when Mary was, was born, to the, to, to the surprise of the parents, she was a female. And they could not understand why God, maybe, so, so to say, did not uh, accept their prayers. But then God answered them by saying that, I am God, I knew why I have given you a daughter instead of a son. And I know what I am going to use that, that uh, uh, lady or that girl for. And we all know that later on, it turned to be that it is. Mary who gave birth to Jesus, right? So, that is one thing. Again, when we look at uh, even the trans means of transport that we are using today, when God created human beings, we are using horses, we are using camels as a means of transport. But there is no book on the surface of the earth which ever mentioned that a time would come when that system of transport or this transport they will be removed or will be replaced by a different means of transport. It is the whole Quran which mentioned that a time would come when that means of transport that the camel said the camel will be abandoned. The horses and the mules will no more be put to use. Sometimes in Jamaica here, on every Friday I see some elderly uh, ladies riding on uh, what's called uh, donkeys. Yeah. It's just for fun because they naturally if they want to go faster they would just use cars, you know. But in the, early, uh, in, in the earlier days, that's what they were using. And now, if anybody claims that the whole Quran is, is a book from human, human beings, no human being could have, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, or, you know, you know uh, ever thought that this is what is going to happen in, in the future. You know, so the whole Quran has a lot of scientific, you know, prophecies which are being fulfilled today. It, it mentioned about the fact that humanity will be brought together in the, in the near future whereby we, we shall what we, we now refer to as global village. You know, before it was not very easy for, for somebody to go to maybe um, you know, uh, India to marry there or to maybe go to America. But now, intermarriage, intermarriage is very common. You pick your phone here and you call somebody in the US, you pick your phone and call somebody in the UK. So the whole Quran also mentioned about this thing, that a time would come when this thing also happened. So the whole Quran, Believes 
basically about all the teachings that was presented by the earlier process, but a lot more has also been added to it. Yes. Because we cannot say that mankind has developed scientifically, but you know, when it comes to religion, God has neglected us. No. So the things that we need, even these um, e e extra terrestrial you know, uh, 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 bodies, the whole plan made a prophecy that a time would come when the possibility of those on earth having some kind of connection with those uh, 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 it's, 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 it's mentioned so, the, the, the Quran mentioned that there are other living beings. Yes, yes, it's, there, it's, it's just here. Then, if you look at this thing over there, you, you will see it right there. And, uh, these are the prophets of the Quran. It talks about the modern um, um, yes. means of communication mm -hmm. and then uh, modern means of traveling and uh, the extraterrestrial. All these things are mentioned in the Quran. And it was written about 1,500 years ago. You see, so it was Quran was far ahead of, of science. So if mankind should not benefit from this book, we are doing a lot of harm to ourselves. Um, is, is it true? Am I correct in saying that the Holy Quran does not teach that Jesus Christ, the prophesied Messiah, that was prophesied to come to reign on earth? By our Messiah. The Holy Quran accepts that Jesus Christ that was a Messiah. Right? Well, not the prophesied one to reign. He, he, he was the Messiah, and the Messiah, and he was the anointed. When we say somebody is anointed, anointed by him, by God. So we accept him as being anointed by God, but he is not God. Yes. Yes. So that much we, we, we accept him, and we have no. The, the Holy Quran. Has no problem at has no problem at all, and uh, also about even his birth. The whole Quran says that yes, he was he was given birth to without a father. Yes, the whole Quran, you know. Yeah, but my, my, my point is yes. that Isaiah, Isaiah, yes. Isaiah prophesied that yes. the government shall be upon his shoulder. He is the one to to govern the earth. So, so the government of earth shall be upon his shoulder. That's a, Isaiah the prophet. I don't know how we are the text. Yes, yes, but but, explain, but, 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 that but but then you agree with me that when he came, he was not governing. No. So God's word always remains supreme. Otherwise, the, the, the earthly kings were able to put him on the cross. So if he were he were he were to rule the way that we we want uh, we want people to understand, they would have had that power to put him on the cross. But the the the. The, the Bible states that he is coming back. Mm -hmm. The same Jesus is coming back yes. to reign on earth yes. for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And I think Revelation mentioned he's going to rule over the middle of Ireland. How you explain those? Yeah, I think uh, a similar, a similar yes. revelation and a similar prophecy is also in Islam about the coming of Jesus. But uh, if you look at it closely, yes, Jesus is coming. In a, I mean, in the form of a different person, this, this, the, the Islamic point of view. The Jesus will be coming, but not the same Jesus who was born about <coughs> 2,000 years ago. Because when, <coughs> me, when he was given birth to, he grew from age 1 to almost the 33, age, 33 years when he was put on the cross. So if that growth should also continue, and Jesus comes today, can you imagine the, 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 the future? And uh, if somebody doubts that, I think the same, the same thing was also applied to Jesus himself. There was a prophecy about the coming of Elijah before the coming of the Messiah, Jesus, in the Bible. There is a prophecy that Elijah or Elijah has to come before the Messiah comes. So the Jews were looking up to the sky because the Bible also says that the same Elijah he went up to the sky body. In a way, he went up to the sky. So the Jews were expecting Elijah to come from the sky. But he never came when they saw Jesus. And they denied Jesus because they had not seen Elijah coming. So they cannot accept Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus ended up answering them that the Elijah they are waiting for is a young John. Whoever who accepts, let him accept. You see the